I made a thing. And then I made another thing. Hello, welcome to my series, Can She DIY It? Where once again, we're going to try DIYing the things I'm scared of. And in today's case, it is bras. I think I literally made a video at one point on my channel being like, I will never DIY a bra. And here we go. I don't want to do a bralette or a sports bra. I'm trying to do the full thing with the wire and the cup contour to your body and two reasons. One, I feel like that just makes a more proper DIY attempt. And then two, I'm trying to replace my t-shirt bra, which is slowly falling apart. She's my go-to so she gets a lot of wear. There's literally just a hole forming on the back clasp and I feel like it's getting to the point where it might soon be clinging on for dear life. I asked on Instagram if people had good recommendations for a bra pattern to start with. I don't really wanna build this from scratch, that's kind of scary. And a popular recommendation was Emerald Erin. So I have here the bra kit as well as the fabric. She just comes all in one box. I think you can use her patterns to also make swimsuits. Try to do a proper unboxing. There's a letter. These are details. All right, I'm gonna spread out these contents for you. Wait, sorry, one last thing I have to say before we get started. This video is sponsored by Native Deodorant, which I'm wearing right now. I'll talk about that soon. Contents. So Aaron wanted me to feel a little bit closer to what's experienced when you would take a proper bra making course of hers. So she did include two trial fit bras so I could put them on and see which one is a closer fit. The one that fit better was this 30E size. I also do have like a left boob is bigger than the right boob thing. Maybe we can accommodate for that. Once you know your size, you can get her pattern and buy all the supplies yourself. Or if you're a first timer like me, I just went with choosing a kit. I'm so grateful I went with that option. I chose the French dot kit in black. Just thought it would look a little sophisticated. And she included the underwires that this bra design was all meant to complement. And she did include a bralette kit. I'll see if I can put that one to good use. But the notions, this is where it gets the most interesting. She included these stretch needles, which she says are the best for no skip stitches while sewing through elastics. She includes these fine pins that make it easier to pin through stretch fabrics and delicate tool. And she included the Guterman Mara 120 thread. I do sew with Guterman thread usually, but she says these ones are thinner and stronger than the standard sewing shop Guterman thread. And there are apparently some bows so I can embellish my bras. Oh my gosh, all right, let's get started. Wow, I love fabric. Okay, quick game of guess where my printer is. <laughs> and yep, this is where we keep our printer in our studio. So it's out of the way, but it's easy to reach when needed. Feel free to rate our setup. I feel like it's a great compromise. Anyways, the pattern has many pages to cover sizes 28B all the way to 40G. So I just printed the three pages that I needed and there is a handy size guide included for you to double check that you actually printed it correctly. So it's time to cut these out. While I do that, let's go through what you're gonna need to make a bra like this. First up is the French dot fabric. This is a stretch mesh for the outer layer of all the pieces. So I have the most of this fabric. Then the same amount in sheer cup lining. This is a non-stretch for the bridge, the outer cradle, upper and lower cup and power bar. At this point, I don't actually know what all of those words mean. The power net. This has a strong stretch. You can see how firm it is. Gonna give the back band a supportive stretch that we appreciate. And then it's the notions. First up, I had this 3 8 inch fold over elastic, then a 3 quarter inch picket plush elastic, followed by some black channeling. I have this 3 quarter inch strap elastic, as well as this 1 quarter inch twill tape, a back closure that has three hooks, and these little strap holders and adjusters. I followed the instructions carefully on how to lay out the pattern pieces, making sure that they are properly aligned with the direction of stretch as indicated by the arrows. I did go a little intense on trying to get the cuts 
perfect. So you see me with the multiple scissors here. <laughs> Arranging the pattern paper to make the most efficient use of fabric is actually really satisfying. And another great example of the challenges in reducing waste when clothing is mass produced. Mass production, it usually cuts through a thick stack of fabric all with a saw all at once. And all of the fabric that's in the negative space basically just goes in the garbage. This looks like some kind of like cat's face. Meow. Good morning. Today's video sponsor is Native Deodorant. Let me just introduce it to you real quick. We might be seeing a lot of my armpits today. I don't say this often about products, but I actually do wish I had this Native Deodorant for my whole life. It dries so quickly. There's no stickiness, no residue. It lasts the whole day even after exercise, even after wearing a sweater indoors. They have an amazing selection of scents to choose from and earth conscious packaging options, which I appreciate. Dan has been using the eucalyptus and mint scent, which smells very refreshing and calming, speaking from the perspective of the person who is snuggled up in his arms and I guess spends a lot of time near his armpit. And I actually favor the unscented one. I've been using this one for half a year. For those of you that want something truly unscented, I will vouch for this one being literally scent invisible. Finally, you may have heard that native deodorant is aluminum free, sulfate free, paraben free. Those are all true. They use natural ingredients like shea butter and coconut oil, and it is vegan and cruelty free. Free, free, free. I have a feeling I'm going to be raising and lowering my arms a lot, as well as getting on my usual sewing sweatiness. Sewing is my cardio. I do have a code for you to get 33% off your first native deodorant pack. Normally you can get the Scent Trio for $36, but with my code, you'll get it for 24. Just click the link in the description, bit.ly slash native with Wendy, and then use my code with Wendy for 33% off. All right, I've got a little bit of a system set up here. So all my little scissors and seam rippers hide in here. And then I have prepared a tiny magnet, which is holding a few of the super thin and sharp pins. Ooh, this is what I'm proud of. I discovered this beam beside me is magnetic. And so I have all the pattern pieces stuck here. The fit bra is over here so that I don't lose track or get confused about what's going on. This pattern starts with the piece that Erin refers to as the power bar, which I guess is this cool little strap thing right here. I already completed the first step, which is that I had to take this top little flat edge, fold it down and sew with a straight stitch. And then next is attaching it to this fold over elastic. If you've ever seen this elastic before, where it's got a thinner area in the middle, so it folds in half perfectly. I didn't know that that was a specific design feature for my benefit. So I need to prepare a 10 inch excess, pin it to the power bar, and then I will sew that together. It did take a little bit of testing to figure out the right stitch width and length for the zigzag. She actually has a pretty helpful guide in her instructions that tell you how to do the zigzag stitch and then assess whether it was too tight or too wide. This is gonna become the front strap and to reduce having this be just like a total freeform stretch action since that actually does not give you great support. She has included this twill tape step, no stretch on this, and I'm supposed to hide it into this strap section. Okay, now as you can see, no longer stretchy, it's super stable, which at first I thought was kind of weird, but I did try this fit bra on and it also has no stretch in the front, so. I'll just follow the instructions. To train them in my cars. Now the cool part of the elastic gets to come into play, so because it has that weak spot down the middle, it just naturally folds right over. And then I'm gonna do a zigzag stitch to hold it all in the folded position. Ba -da bump, and I did the other one already. <laughs> next step. The next part is called the cradle. I already did the right side of my body. First, the bridge, right sides together with the outer cradle, straight stitch. Then open it up and top stitch the seam allowance open. Okay. 
Now the back band right sides together over here. And then lastly, tuck the raw edge towards the cradle and top stitch. We have passed safely through the land of the under boob. I feel so accomplished. Time to do the cups. This is the upper cup and the lower cup. I pinned them right sides together. And for the record, these pins are working really well with this fabric and just put it together with a straight stitch. Then the raw seam is pushed towards the upper cup and top stitched to lock it all in. Side note, this has involved a lot of switching gears between straight stitch, zigzag stitch, and then also like straight leaning stitch. When I'm really good at it, I feel like I'm driving stick and I'm just like bloop, 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 bloop. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. It's supposed to baste the power bar to the cup. The instructions specifically suggested starting at the right side of the cups instead of the left. So I just pinned those parts right sides together and then I fed it slowly through the machine as I made my way around the curve. I was pretty nervous about getting the fabric tension right, but the notches were a really helpful reassurance that things were lining up. Total flush alignment in the front. Total flush alignment on the side. I love patterns. Okay, as well as this is going, I still can't try it on to see if it actually fits. It's really just that as a standalone piece, it's going well. The next step is channeling, which I've never handled this material outside of it being attached to a bra, but it's a soft plush ribbon. There's like ever so slightly a little bit of give and it, I'm wielding this scissor, sorry. It's open on the inside, which will allow for my underwire to go inside. I already did the right side. You can see this bold U shape. That's the channeling done. I'm only supposed to sew it to this raw edge connecting the cup to the underwire. So I basically have to like flip everything out of the way and just keep shuffling it along until I'm on the other side of the U. Channeling done. I need the pie cut, pick it, pico. Just as a compliment to this pattern, I really like how it often uses the width of elastics as a guide for seam allowance. So there's not a ton of measuring of which edges have to be how wide, we just follow the elastics. To reduce bulk, I once again had to trim away the excess fabric and I promise you will be way less awkward than me because I'm just trying to do this in a way that the camera can see what I'm doing. The last step was to flip the elastic up to the inside of the bra and then zigzag it along the top. She's back, our good old friend, the foldover elastic. This time I'm attaching it to the top of the bra cups. So just like with the power bar at the beginning, it is sewn first to the inside of the bra, then I trim away the excess fabric and then fold it over the edge for a finishing zigzag on the outside of the bra. Today, I'm gonna try to finish this bra soothing candle. Let's do it. This is the little three hook and eye closure that goes on the back of the bra. I definitely learned way too late when you first buy a bra, your ideal fit should be on the farthest hook. And then as their elastics lose their elasticity over time, then you can slowly move into the tighter hooks, so. I hope you know that now. There's a little envelope pocket here and I'm supposed to double check that the band can actually fit inside it before I seal off this top edge. Yeah, elastic time. Every time I work with the fold over elastic, it is the same. First, I pin it to the inside of the bra, lining up the edge of the bra with the very center of the fold over elastic. Then I do a zigzag stitch to attach it. I trim off any excess fabric. I do add the twill tape again, it's optional, but since I did it with the first strap, I should do it with the second. And then I fold over the elastic, add a zigzag stitch, and that closes it off as a finished strap. This gives me this really interesting double strap in the front, which is a nice way to distribute weight across your shoulders a little bit more. It's a specific feature of this bra design, and I've never owned a bra, I think, with double straps, so this is actually really interesting to me. The next step is to finish the channeling. It has been attached, but it's still not completely secure. I really want to get this right because I feel like the number one reason I've ever had to say goodbye to a bra is because the wires popped out of it. Oh man, that like, I feel like I went really cross-eyed on that one. Staring at black on black fabric. There was one straight stitch that was kind of like a top stitch that held down the channeling from the front, and then one more straight stitch on the bottom edge of the channeling. I also did a bar tack across the top middle, which closes off the channel so that when the wire goes in, it meets an end. In my case, I just did a whole bunch of tiny straight stitches back and forth. I don't have like a proper bar tacking 
machine. Just do what you can with what you have. And then I also bar tacked right here along the two outer corners so that now the power bar is no longer this like flip flopping thing, but it's fully secured to the cup. The straps mean we're almost at the end of the instruction sheet. Normally my brain gets all inside out on straps, but it was nice to just follow the instructions to put the slider and the hoop on so that it's this adjustable piece that gets attached to the top and the bottom of the back band. This got sewn onto the back of the bra, just an anchor at the top and the bottom according to the instructions. The front two straps go through the ring, I fold the ends over and sew them down with a straight stitch. All right, the absolute last thing I needed to add is the back closure. It actually opens up to be like a little envelope, so I just sandwich the back inside and then seal it with a straight stitch. I can't believe I made my own bra! Hopefully you can like feel my exhausted <laughs> excitement. I still have to try it on to see how it fits. And since Erin sent me supplies for a few more bras, I actually thought I'd combine my own stretch material with one of her kits to make my own skin tone replacement t-shirt bra. It's kind of faint, but the cups should have been in this cute mint colored tool. All I did was add an extra outer layer of my own fabric to camouflage the tool, but still benefit from the tool's structure and security. Okay, normally at this part of the video, I would just put on the finished garment and try to give you a good 360 so you can see from all the angles how it turned out, but bras are very picky on their fit, so I'm just gonna talk you through it instead. Also, in the interest of not getting it demonetized, I am going to be doing this wearing a tank top on underneath. This is confusing, but so is society's expectations on when and where skin is okay. Anyways, first test with bras, does it pinch? Does it have gaps? I have tried this on without the tank top underneath and there are no weird pinches. It's very comfortable. There is one gap, which is over here in the left armpit. It might've been because I didn't apply enough tension when I was making my way around with the elastic, but to fix it, I did just put in like a teeny tiny little dart to help pull it in a little bit. If I had to complain about anything, two things. First, there's a little bit of tension on the mesh that causes it to pucker slightly. As you can tell, there's some lines and wrinkles that form. And the second thing is actually more to do with design, which is that I chose the French dot so I could clearly see the dot pattern, but because it was black French dot on black mesh, I feel like the design kind of got lost. So maybe it would have been nice to do like a beige mesh on the inside. What really impresses me though is that it actually is comfortable and that this front bridge actually really does press against my body when not worn with a tank top, which for me is just like a personal, hard to find thing in bras. For a first bra though, this is like the best possible outcome I feel like. Okay, I'm back in. Beige bra, black bodysuit. The gap at my left side is completely gone in this one because I applied a bit more tension with the elastic on my way around. And if you remember, there was a step where I added twill tape in the black bra to stabilize the front strap. As an experiment, I left out the twill tape since it is optional in this one. So you can see that the straps still have their elasticity. I actually find this to be a little bit more comfortable and snug. So I'm probably gonna remove the twill tape from the black one, which is not hard. I can't believe I can modify my own bra. The cups, as you can see, have a little bit of a wrinkling issue. It's not as bad actually when I wear it without the bodysuit like it's meant to be worn. I'm gonna put on the most unforgiving item I have when it comes to t-shirt bras, which is this like thin white cotton tee. Yes, and you can see how if the fabric puckers a little, it's visible through a thin white t-shirt. So I guess my t-shirt bra hunt still continues. If you have experience making a t-shirt bra style from a pattern, do drop that in the comments too. My bra making confidence has like literally shot through the roof since making these bras, so I feel ready to tackle another bra. If you wanna check out Native Deodorant or Emerald Erin Sews, I'll put all of those things in the description. Don't forget to pop that open. You can always find photos of my projects on my Instagram, at with Wendy, and if you made it all the way here and you haven't subscribed, subscribe, hit the bell notification. Thank you all so much for watching. I seriously never thought my sewing journey would take me to the point where I'm making my own bras, and I have you guys to thank for actually cheering me on and believing in me and giving me good resources. So thank you very much. See you in the next video.